a circular economy seeks to increase and retain product value. It eliminates waste and pollution, circulates products and materials, and regenerates nature. McKinsey estimated it to be an economic model worth four and a half trillion US dollars. There are, however, many ways to deliver circularity. Strategies include using regenerative biological materials, product life extension, product as a service models, reuse, remanufacturing, recycling, and composting. Energy recovery can also be considered circular, but only as a last resort and only for regeneratively produced biological materials and under a strict set of conditions. How we measure each strategy's effectiveness is different, which is why we need circularity metrics. To provide a single, fair and justifiable way to compare solutions, many methodologies have been developed for quantifying circularity. The majority are highly qualitative, and only a handful have been applied in a commercial setting. Quantitative indicators are what we want to compare products effectively, as data tends to be easier to defend than opinion. The material circularity indicator was the first circular economy metric. The Ellen MacArthur Foundation developed MCI in collaboration with many stakeholders. As a result, it's one of the most widely used circularity metrics today. It also has the advantage of being quantitative and aligns closely with the data needed for a life cycle assessment. So what data do you need to calculate the material circularity indicator? I like to visualize this as a set of material inputs, a set of material outputs, and a couple of indicators in the middle that reflect how the product is used. On the input side, we're quantifying how effectively we've decoupled from using virgin or non-regenerative materials. To quantify this, we need the mass of each material. We also need to know the percentage of each material from reused, remanufactured, or recycled sources. For the remaining virgin materials, we need to know if any are biological materials and how much of those are sourced from a supply that could be considered regenerative. On the material output side, we're quantifying how effectively we're avoiding waste production. To quantify this, we need to know how much of our product is collected and how much is recovered through reuse, remanufacturing, recycling, composting, or energy recovery. When it comes to recycling, we also need to know the recycling process's efficiency, which is a function of the collection rate and the efficiency of the recycling process itself. Only some end-of-use options apply to every material. Composting, for example, is only applicable to biological materials. Energy recovery is only considered circular under quite a strict set of criteria and only if the material comes from a regenerative biological source. In the middle, we're quantifying how designing the product to be used for longer or shared between users can avoid needing as much material in the first place. If a circular product can last twice as long as a typical product, we can effectively have half the materials required to perform the same function. Likewise, if 10 users can share a product, the materials needed to achieve the same function would be a tenth of that required for them to buy their own. By combining these factors into the material circularity indicator, we are presented with a single score that can be compared across different products and circular economy strategies. The score ranges from 0.1 for a linear product to 1.0 for a perfectly circular product. It is possible to score less than 0.1, but only if your system is deliberately wasteful. The MCI score encapsulates the circularity of the product and all of the different circular economy strategies that have been deployed. The MCI can be applied to materials, components, products, and entire businesses or business units as a metric. We have also used the MCI to model the effectiveness of regional circular economy strategies, identify hotspots, and model possible interventions. The MCI generally isn't used in isolation, but alongside other established metrics found in life cycle assessments and corporate risk assessments. For example, in the ThinkStep tool, you can compare the MCI of different product components with their embodied carbon or cost. Understanding the intersection of these different metrics can help you to identify hotspots and to prioritize where you might look to apply circular economy principles first. Increasingly, we find MCI reported alongside environmental product declarations and as a means of identifying possible mitigation strategies for critical materials and other supply chain risks.